What's going on everybody? Beastly Gamer here and welcome to my channel. Today I want to talk to you guys about this year. 2015. What a surprise it has been. I uh I got to say this. I'm really pleasantly surprised at what we've seen in the first 4 months of this year. Um uh, from from Xbox, from PlayStation and uh well, I, I really can't say too much about Nintendo at this point, but at least for Microsoft and uh, PlayStation, we've had lots and lots of pleasant surprises. Um this first quarter has been very, very exciting for me. I've seen multiple games that I would already put in my Game of the Year uh, category. Well, at least two. And I want to talk to you guys about those and get your thoughts on the first quarter of 2015. Starting out in this year, I got to play an amazing game called Dying Light. Uh, I did not think this game would be really on my radar. I thought it looked kind of good. I wasn't really too amped about the Dead Island series. Uh, you know, that ga those games, to me, felt a little dated, and uh, the way that they actually controlled and felt, to me, didn't feel fun. And so I never really got into them. Uh, I actually own them, but I never really got into them. And so I was thinking, you know, this might be just a next generation version of that game, feel the same way, play the same way, and boy was I wrong. And I'm so happy I was wrong. Dead, Dying Light, <laughs> Dead Island. Dying Light turned out to be one of the greatest experiences I've had this year. Uh, and it's definitely a game of the year contender. A lot of people play this game and have no idea what's going on in the story. Uh, because the story is secondary to the fun. And very seldom do you play a game that feels that way. Especially, especially if you're playing it with somebody else. Now, I had the pleasure of playing Dying Light with my beautiful wife the entire time I played it. And uh, once you actually get that first hour in and you're you're unlocked the ability to do multiplayer you can play with up to four people and that is got to be one of the greatest feelings ever playing that game with other people destroying zombie mobs the day and night cycle I mean if you have not played this game do yourself a favor I don't care which console you're on play it it has a, a day and night paradigm where at nighttime you've got these volatiles these creatures uh, uh, they're extra fast extra strong really hard to kill and uh, you go through the game until you get something called a grappling hook. And this grappling hook, oh my god, it changed the entire game. Uh, it really did. And, and, it, and it did it in a way that I did not expect. Because I got so used to traversing the game on my feet, running and parkour elements, and uh, getting used to that. Once you get the grappling hook, it completely changes everything. You could be in the middle of a zombie horde, and you look at a wall, or you look at a building, and you're immediately there. You shoot the grappling hook and you are where you were looking at and it changes everything. You know, it makes the nighttime easier to traverse. You don't feel nearly as stagnant uh, and you feel more invincible. And I got to give Dying Light a round of applause. Uh, I really, really, Techland, you guys got my seal of approval 100% uh, for Game of the Year contender right now. Also, Xbox. Xbox One. I uh, got my Xbox One for this game. I did not know I'd like it as much as I have. Now, I'm only about six hours into the game, but the game is Ori in the Blind Forest. Ori in the Blind Forest is another pleasant surprise for me. I thought that the game looked beautiful uh, from the onset, you know, from the early gameplay footage that was shown. I was like, wow, this game is hand-drawn. Uh, the characters look like something from Spirited Away. Um, there's this creepy-looking owl. It had so many different... Uh, avenues for me to be excited about. But when I actually got my hands on the game, that's when the excitement really began. A lot of people use this term, Metroidvania. To me, the game plays like Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Uh, there's a huge uh, upgrade pool. There's three whole lists of upgrades that you can upgrade your character on. And uh, what you do in the game is you, you do a lot of backtracking. It's a huge map. There's very aggressive enemies. And it's just a beautiful experience and a very beautiful story. The first 10 minutes were silent, but I felt kind of the way I did in the first 10 minutes of The, of the Last of Us. It was just a really nice experience, and it's a hell of an exclusive for Microsoft to have. And I'm very, very, very happy that I had an opportunity to play it. Now, the last game on my list for Contender for the first quarter of 2015 uh, Game of the Year is Bloodborne from Software's Game is absolutely amazing and it is my game of the year at this point above and beyond Ori in the Blind Forest 
and Dying Light. Bloodborne has been something very, very special to me. It has been the game that I've been playing. I haven't gone back to play The Last of Us, haven't played Destiny, haven't played anything beside this game, haven't played Dying Light, haven't played Ori. And uh, this game is really a special game. And from what I understand, a lot of people like this game. It's one of the best-selling PS4 games and definitely a must-have if you like challenging, beautiful worlds, exciting combat. You definitely should pick this game up. But Bloodborne, uh, going into that game and having the experience of trying trial and error, dying left and right, over and over again. I'm sitting next to my wife. We're both playing the game. We're dying over and over and over again. And she looked at me and she was like, I'm, I can't play this. It's just too tough. And I looked at her. I said, babe. Just stick with me. Let's do this together. And at that time, we we didn't have enough insight to play together. In the game, you need to have at least 10 insight to ring your bell, to call someone into your world. So for the first few hours, we couldn't even play together. And uh, we didn't understand either how to play together. But after about three or four hours, we were both past the first boss. And we were going back to uh, the Heaven's Dream, or I think that's the name of it or Hunter's Dream, uh, where you can level up your weapon, your character, add, you know, elemental attacks to your, your main weapon or your gun. And it, it began to sync with us what we were actually doing and what we are embarking on. And uh, Bloodborne has been an amazing experience all the way up until I'm at where I am now. I'm level 94, 95. I put in, well, the last time I checked, 65 hours on the game. And I haven't done that in a very, very long time. A very long time. I think I only put about 25 to 30 hours in on Dying Light. I'm already at 65 hours on Bloodborne, and I'm anxious to play it now. It's been that kind of experience. And I think that this year has lots and lots of potential. With all the other games that I'm sure will be announced at E3 this year. You guys let me know what you think. Of the first quarter of 2015, were there any surprises for you? Monster, Monster Hunter on 3DS, I have not played it. But I hear that's an amazing game that deserves the same accolades. If you guys have played that, let me know in the comments. It doesn't matter what system you're on. 2015 has been an amazing year so far in gaming. Let me know what you think below. And as always, if you're new to the channel, subscribe. I'm the Beastly Gamer, and I'll see you guys next time.